Okay. <laughs> You knew that you just did that on purpose. I know. I saw you dancing in the background. Okay, I can yes, see I've you. Yes, I always right? dance to this. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now I know part of the reason why we've been having a certain kind of conversation. Hello, why we have what? <laughs> certain conversations in our private group chat, but we'll talk about that later. Hi, Pasiris. Good evening. Hello, come on. on. <laughs> oh, very good. And for, for our viewers who have no idea what we just said, Pasir Riz and Kembangan are two places in Singapore. And these are the uh, places that uh, Ashok and I are based. So go Google and find out which part of uh, uh, which part of Singapore that we are in. And it's all Singapore today. Uh, there's no Malaysia involved. Yes. Okay, um, we got rid of Malaysia, uh, and it's Ashok, Ashok and me um, looking at how we can find patterns in all the conversations that we've had uh, in the month of October around talent development, right? right? So, of course, I'm taking the glory, a lot of the glory, given, especially when I, you know, which is very shameful, given that I was not here half of the half of the month, whatever. But I learned from the Sifu, who happens to be in Malaysia. Mm, that right. one in Malaysia, sitting in Malaysia. Uh, so, uh, just for the record, um, I did not celebrate that Sifu is not here. Just for the oh, record. <laughs> oh, just for the record. Eh? Okay, okay. Yes, number two. <laughs> and number two, uh, to all our guests who have logged in and listening to us, happy the Bali or the Pavali. I know we just passed, but it's still the week of celebration, the Festival Light. So, have a great one. Yes, uh, ha have a great one. It's a celebration for, I hear from some, I have not, it's not over yet. Uh, probably go on for a week or something like that. So Diwali nice. Valtical, everyone. Um, for those of you uh, Hindus who are celebrating Diwali or Diwali. Okay. And so, we got uh, Sandeep around. Hello, Sandeep. Yes. Nice to have you around. Hi, Sandeep. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Um, us on the show uh, and if you happen to celebrate Diwali as well, happy Diwali to you. Okay, so um, as usual, it's the end of the month and mm. as usual, what we do is uh, in the last week or the last show for the month, we recap the shows that went on before okay. and we also look at, you know, drawing, seeing if there are patterns, uh, what are things that we spot and what are things that uh, perhaps they were in common or that were contradicting amongst the three people that we uh, that we had for the month, right? And then um, maybe put that together at the end with a with a recap of the recap <laughs> and close the session. <laughs> sure, sure. All right, uh, before we go, uh, Ashok, um, you had the opportunity to talk to Masi, one of my favorite people, um, Marshall Vianata okay. of uh, okay. Citibank. Um, Tell us what was uh, some things that you took away from that. What was okay. the you know, insights? Sure. Okay, so uh, uh, first of all, for everyone who's now uh, listening in again, for the month of October, we focused on talent development, right? Uh, so just to give a bit of context, uh, two months ago, we started with talent acquisition, then we talked about talent retention. So October was fully focused on tapping the ideas of talent development. Yes, and Mashi came about and, whoa, was it powerful, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. She's quiet, you know, but she's one of those mm. quiet person but who thinks deeply. And, and yep. one of the things that she kept, kept talking about was the need for collaborative relationships mm. and that is good she kept uh banging on that the importance mm. of having relationships within the organization even in the business world and it has to be collaborative and some of the ideas that she shared with us was, number one she she reinforced the fact that relationships contribute to business results okay that's mm. number one number two she said we need to be very proactive in our approach to development of people Mm. Mm. Okay. And she went on to tell us that we need to know people at a deeper level. That means you need to have those purposeful conversations. Mm. Why? Because we need to help people be aware of their blind spots. You need to help people reflect. So mm. she's a big person about asking deeper questions to help people self-reflect on what is important for them. 
you know and she said this will also help in building collaborative relationships so uh, Marsh, uh, Masi, right uh, uh, she she practices yoga and all that and she 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 keeps very high standards for herself and it came out you know she was telling us you mm. know she really puts very high standards at the same time she pushes herself to learn and i mm. think that is what she brings across to the people that she has conversations with and she knows mm. that people development is not just a responsibility of the L&D department, but individual line managers too, mm. right? And that's why she focuses a lot on helping them self-reflect on how they can be more powerful, how they can be uh, more purposeful in their conversation and develop performance in that way. So that, mm. that was my biggest takeaway, collaborative relationships to drive business results. Mm. And And... I'm glad that came out because that is Marcy. Uh, I've known Marcy for <laughs> for for wow, well, I think five going on six years, and I've you know okay. worked with her uh, in in the capacity of being someone who supports her from the outside in. And you're right, she's it's spot on. It is all about collaboration, and mm. so she so she's amazing. She's this bridge, right? That collab yeah. uh, that looks at collaborating internally, then taking taking the essence of what she gets from the internal stakeholder and then collaborating with the external party and saying, okay, now how do we bring that in? How do we, um, how do we bridge it? How do we marry it such that we are getting the best, we're getting the best from your, the, the external person that she's partnering with okay. or, or okay. partners and say, okay, now I need to help uh, I need you guys because I know you guys are good in this, this, this to help me bridge the gaps here with my internal people. Right. And and spot on, she spends a lot of time in those conversations hmm. on both sides, right? Hmm. In both sides. And um, both both Ma, um, Mother and I have, have told her and we continue to tell her and we'll tell to everybody in the world as we're doing it right now, because I'm going to do it right now. Um, she, I love, we love working with her because we right. really know we have clarity of what she wants to achieve because she, mm -hmm. has, she has determined that. She has determined that for herself. She's determined that in collaboration with her, uh, with her client, her internal okay. client. And... Okay then she brings that to the partner, external partner, and makes that clear. So um, it's challenging work. It's uh, mm -hmm. growth work, right? Yet at the same time, you know that it's a partnership in all the essence and the essence of that word when you're going. You know she has your back, uh, and you therefore you know, I'll make sure that you have her back as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a lady. She's a lady who walks the top. <laughs> yeah. Is it, speaking of which, I'm, I must say, um, I, initially, I, I, it seems like uh, she was on dicey grounds. What I mean by, let me give you my context from my view, right? Mm. Because she talked about business results and she kept emphasizing we need to help people understand their blind spots. So I was like wondering, mm. you know, how are you going to do that? And isn't that kind of sensitive within the mm. business world and all of that? Mm. And, and, and what I walked away with was understanding uh, her belief that wisdom lies within everyone. And mm. she as a coach is there to ask them the right questions because the solutions will come out and she just guides them. You know? mm. So initially mm. I was like, oh, this is a bit of dicey. But then I could see that what you just mentioned, the clarity in her thinking yeah. and the way she approaches. And even that conversation, if you think about it, it is about building relationships, isn't it? Collaborative it relationships, is. you know, yeah. we all have blind spots, but it is how we help each other. Each other, yeah, grow, become clear about, right? yeah, yeah, grow and clear about what we want. Oh, and, yeah. and as we grow in organizations, it helps us uh, improve our performance and therefore also contribute to the results. So I can mm. see the power in that, you know. Yeah, it's it's also the uh, blind Uncovering blends for as we both know, right? It allows the person to go beyond a certain, mm. you know, it's stretching you. It's it's yes. um, force, in a way, forcing you to see what are the things that I need to build that I don't have right now. Yeah. Um, so it's not just collaboration for from a very 
feel good kind of a space yes, but it's yes. collaboration in growth not just uh taking and strengthening the muscle that you have but it's also stretching the muscle and maybe even building new muscle because mm. um we may not know that the role that we are in at that point in time or the role that's planned for us uh, as a talent you know as, if you're a talent and it's been projected for us needs us to have certain kinds of skills we which we don't, we're not aware we don't know that we don't have it yeah right, um right. Yeah, so so I think it's it's uh, it's, it's a very interesting um, angle that she comes from, mm. right? Asking the leaders what are some blind spots. So focusing the conversation around blind spots, not just from the the team's perspective or the learner's perspective, but from That's the right. team leader's perspective as well. Right. As to what are you missing? Are you missing something? Are we missing? not that she has the answer, but just going through that process together. Uh, learning and development, L and D, right, as in, and the business going through that process and, and uncovering what are those things that we may be not that's not so obvious that we may be missing. I think that uh, it's a it's not an easy process. It's not a yeah. short process, but I think when you do it well or you mm -hmm. keep with it, um, the results uh, demonstrate. So. Yeah. That's true, yeah. that's true. So yeah, so that was Marshi, all about mm -hmm. uh, her end in mind is about collaborative relationships and the way to do mm. it is being proactive in going deeper to understand the person, help them understand their blind spots, and then mm. help them reflect so they can develop and grow. Mm. Right. So that was Very Marcy. Good. I had a yeah. fantastic time there. Very good, very good, very good. So we then uh, had you a chat did with... come, right? With Dr. Kam. Yes, yes. So no, we I wasn't there. No, you weren't. <laughs> I'm, so this is learning moment for me. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> oh okay. Um, well, you weren't there, but uh, you you heard the the show. Um, Doctor, come. So we move from Marcy, who's L and D, yep, which yep. is where you know many people think, huh, development, right? When you're talking about development and growth, it's uh, HR or L and D that's involved. And if an organization has an OD space uh, a, a role, then OD is involved in it, right? Um, we shifted gears a little bit with Doctor Kam because Doctor Kam is a team leader, and okay. what was He's a team leader, right? He leads a team, a business function uh, within uh, within a pharmaceutical uh, organization. And and where we where we took the conversation was what uh, how is how does the other way around? Not L and D collaborating with the business, but how does the business collaborate with HR to get the best out of his team? Right. Um, so it, it's the function deliberately saying i am going to collaborate with hr right uh deliberately saying i'm going to play a role a, a, a deliberate role in making sure that i am part of the team's development mm -hmm. and his mantra is if i don't know my team then who else knows my team Okay, if I don't know my team, okay, fair enough. I think it's a good question. If I don't know my team, yeah, okay. and 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 I think if you if I were to put it in a nutshell, you know how all the books, you know all these management books and these gurus will talk about how the a team leader or a leader is someone who builds relationships and get results through relationships, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm I'm codifying it that way, right? Sure, that sure. the a leader is the person who uh, keeps the team together is the uh, one that you know anchors the team, and it's all about making the team work better, right? As an individual and as a team, right? And okay. how this is where our vision is. This is as a leader. This is where you should be heading, kind of a thing, right? This is your okay. kind of your goal, right? Um, and yet, we've also had many conversations with leaders who find that's what, and that's the work we, you and I and Muller do, right? We will have work with the leaders to help them feel more comfortable with the build skill around being able to do that, right? Dr. Kam is a model in action. Hmm. Okay. okay. Um, Dr. Kam walks the talk of a leader that focuses on relationships. Um, okay. That focuses on who focuses on knowing exactly each person in the team, what makes them tick, both at the professional as well as a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, he he looks at the two separately, 
and he strategizes about the two separately. So if he wants to know you, Ashok, and you're part of his team, and he wants to know about you professionally, then the conversation, for example, happens in a professional setting. Right. right? Um, but he knows that all of us are a composite of both things that happen at work and outside, yep. right? So yep. he wants to know about the non-professional stuff, then that conversation will happen outside in an outside setting, nothing to do with work. So over coffee, for example, or over right. dinner or a lunch or a meal or something like that, where he steers the conversation into, uh, you know, a, a place that both are comfortable sharing and talking about it. Because he said, whatever happens, it's the, we need to work with the individual as a whole individual. The person doesn't just exist in this vacuum of professionals, right? right. He or she is a whole person. So it's, it'll be helpful to know them on both levels, right? So that's, uh, that was one of the things uh, he talked about. He talked about how his success is determined by the success of the team. Okay. And we're not talking about ticking the boxes on KPIs. He's talking about if my t individual team members are successful, they get promoted, they go into another roles, oh. Oh. Uh, they achieve what they want. That's my success because I know that what I have been doing has been the right thing and it's been right for them to get what they want. Wow. Right? So he says he knows everyone in his team to that level of you know details and 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 and, and the granular level, so wow. he does spend a lot of time doing that, right? He says, and he, it's just me. I that's how I need to be. I need to be involved in the process. So I will go to HR if something's not working. I'll go to HR and see how can we make it work, whether it's systems, whether it's processes, it's uh, SOPs, right? How can we make it work? Uh, in this instance, because I have a good feeling for it. And the proof is in the pudding because his numbers prove that his strategy seems to be working, right? Um, so his strategy is not to look at the numbers and push the numbers, but you know, look at the people and know what the people, what makes them tick, what makes them work optimally, and the numbers will follow. So that's Dr. Come. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean Wow. Uh, I mean, the way you explain it, I'm already, I, I'm already wowed by your experience, you know, listening to him. So what I'm hearing yeah. is, again, uh, yes, the results are the results. It's a process. The process is really focusing about the people. Oh, I mean, yeah. As a leader, right, I have the courage to hold the conversations with L&D HR because I know my people better. As a leader, I mm -hmm. know my people better, not only at the professional level, but at a personal level. Yeah. And, and there's a dichotomy in there where I hold this conversation in different environments and, uh, and space, but mm. I know the whole person, mm. right? And, and yeah. with that, then I know how to grow them. And my success is when they grow to yes. hit different positions, promotions, you know, lateral promotions, mm. whatever it is, right? So his, his success is based on how his people grow. And he Correct. knows that when he helps them grow, the business results will be there. Hello. It's because yep. of business results, right? Yeah. Yep. Fantastic, fantastic. I mean, you, I mean I, I'm still wowed. You know, uh, <laughs> what a oh no, what what a blueprint, right? Like I, I understand what what he mean by saying uh, he's a model. Right? Yeah, you know, you, you you hear. For me, it's been like. You hear all this, okay, this is what we aspire to be. This is what a leader aspires to be, or this is what we think a good leader is, right? And I'm sure many of us um, and, and many of you out there, have said, I, okay, some of you may have found that leader. Uh, and then, you know, some of us are going, where, where is this person that they seem to be talking about this book that, you know, you, you, you talk about it really seriously, that really exists where, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Dr. Kam. Hey. And, and, and you, you're right. You're right to say I wasn't in the show, but uh, thank God uh, you uh, you have that recording on LinkedIn and Facebook and all that. Yeah. So it gave me the ability to log in. So so anyone who's listening in, all our shows in the past shows are all available. You can go and listen to all of them. And and mm -hmm. one thing I heard from uh, Dr. Kam was he was 
courageous to say the difficult parts of uh, being a leader. He said, mm. I remember one thing he mentioned was the toughest part of being a leader is applying empathy mm. to help mm. the staff realize what they really want. So it's it's helping the staff. At the same time, how do you now apply the empathy? That means it's about knowing, I, I gather it as knowing yourself and helping the other person. Yep. You know? and, and, yep. and that is a tough part for leaders, isn't it? Yes. Yes, you know? it is. And yeah, I guess it, um, it stems from the commitment to want to be such a leader. Mm. Sorry, I interrupted or, you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Or uh, you're right. Um, or knowing that perhaps I need a different way. I need to think about being with a team and, and supporting the team in a different way than what's been practiced out there. Wow. That means it's reframing my current practices, my mindsets to see things different. But it comes from the intention of wanting to serve and help the other. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Wow. So, um, yeah, it was... Uh, and it, it was really uh, quite a good, it was like, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, all these nuggets, right? And it was in 30 minutes because so we had a little bit of a tech issue. He was only oh, yeah. able to join us in 30 <laughs> minutes, right? Um, yeah, it was really, uh, really a good 30 minutes uh, <laughs> show. You know what we can do? We can write to him and say, Dr. Kam, you owe us another 30 minutes, come in November. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sequel, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, okay. uh, yeah. Sandeep has uh, uh, put up a note there. Here mm. he says, in his opinion, yes, it's tough to understand employees' emotions to in different situations. Situations. I totally yeah. agree, Sandeep. Totally agree. And I know if Muller is also on the show, which I think she will echo what I'm going to say and what uh, Sham also agrees. Uh, yes, it is tough, but I believe as leaders, we need to take those steps to really understand. Right? Uh, it comes with having the skills of being asking the right questions, listening, and then guiding them. But yes, it's tough, but it is very important. Right? Thanks a lot for that, Sandeep. Uh, so that was Dr. Kam. Mm, yes. <laughs> And we finished off our guest. The last guest we had was that uh, thing, which you and who was not which, sorry, who you and uh, Muller had the privilege to interview. Right? And I have to yes. leave you on this one, really, because I have not yet seen the show. So you need to wow me with the show. Okay? There's somebody. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Terrible, terrible. Anyway. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh -huh. yeah, saying. We had 60 minutes with him, maybe more, 62 perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not enough. I could just go on and on and listening, all right? Mm. Now, okay, he's with uh, Sintoma Malaysia, right? Mm. Now, what I liked about his focus, right? His whole organization, and, and he's such a practitioner in this, values. And mm. the interesting part is we got him on on Values Day last last Thursday. But, oh, yeah, okay. It's a nice coincidence. You know, it is a very yeah. nice coincidence. Uh, so his focus was all about the values. Now, I'm not referring to only personal values, though there was a discussion mm. about that. It's mm. about corporate values. You know, mm. how everyone walks the talk is because they put values up front, right? Values mm. up front. Mm. Uh, and everybody's aligned to the values. Now, how do they do that? Now, he even gave us an example of how values influence from recruitment to development. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so there are even uh, playbooks given to the line managers and the type of questions they can ask, how, mm -hmm. what, they are, what they are looking for when it comes to values, right? Okay. So, so values guide everything. Right, right down from recruitment to development in this sense. Mm. And they also look at uh, two things, right? The quantitative is measured by metrics, as we know. Mm -hmm. A lot of his focus was on the how, the behaviors. Okay. What are the mm. behaviors driven by the values? So yes, the organization has those five values from safety mm. to uh, innovation to integrity, you know, uh, from what I mm. remember. But they also focus on identifying the 
behaviors. Mm. Right? What are the behaviors that drive those values? And that is why the leaders are also supported because the leaders are held accountable for these values on a day-to-day -day basis and how it shows up in the organization. And they're also uh, uh, supported by a learning and development playbook. You know? So, yeah, they do have that. So, so it is not just, these are the values, it's in the walls, go follow. No. It, mm. It's a mm. continuous conversations. Now, he even spoke about continuous conversations because the leaders are skilled to hold continuous developmental conversations. Oh, wow. With the yes, okay. that's right. Because mm. they know that, okay, these are the values, these are the behavior sets that you need to focus on, mm. right? And so, therefore, how do you now identify those competencies and how do you now help people develop to those levels? So the leaders are encouraged to continuously hold those developmental conversations, not just a, during your performance appraisal period and all that, also at ad hoc times in that sense, you know. So it's continuous development. So they're guided mm. along that way. And something he brought up was communication is key. Mm. It's very transparent, right? Because he said communication is very, very important in the organization because whether it's a town hall, your one-to-one -one meetings, you know, group meetings, whatever it is, communication transparency is extremely important because it's easier for people to make decisions. Mm. Right? Yep. It's easier for, yep. to, for, for people to make decisions. And he also spoke about how values contribute to the culture Right, mm. and some examples mm. he gave us. Yes, they have an open door policy, right? And and anyone who calls him, um, Mr. Yat saying he does not allow that. He said, no, there's no Mister here. I know it's an Asian mm. thing, is to respect, but he breaks that down and said, no, no, just call me Yat Singh. So he allows mm. that, uh, the, that level of conversation where there are no titles, you know, the the, the mm. use of personal names, open door policies, and they focus a lot on holding continuous conversation, communication in that sense, to ensure this transparency, right? So they're all driven by values, right? And he and uh, and I was sharing with him when I when I was googling about his company and all that, I came mm. across a particular site and and someone had actually commented that Sintoma is safety, so it's like synonymous, you know, because okay. they walk the talk, because the leaders mm. walk the talk, right? Mm. And, and 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 you you normally hear about values in organization and only maybe a certain group of people are trying to push that. But here is cascaded down throughout the whole organization that every leader is held accountable. They are mm. empowered on how to drive the behaviors. So any organization, anyone, uh, uh, HR, l &D, or leaders listening in to us, right? You've already got the values with you. You've already mm. identified what are the values that you need. So now just mm. go deeper to identify the behaviors and ensure those behaviors come out on a day-to-day -day basis, on an operational basis, and provide the leaders with those tools to be able to hold those developmental conversation or the guidance on how to develop people with those behaviors, you know? Mm. So mm. I, I think it's a fantastic thing. It's it's it. We, we've heard a lot about the importance of values. Uh, in the past, I've heard of people saying, ah, it's just part of the wall. But it was so refreshing to hear someone who says they take it so seriously that it drives their behaviors. Mm. You know, every mm. aspect of the organization. Yeah, I that that idea. So two things jump out of me uh, out mm -hmm. to me as I hear you speak or as you spoke. One was that that building the skill in developmental conversations. Yes. For leaders to have that. Um, and I think that is from, from and I'm, I'm sure you will agree with me, from the conversations that we have with HR, with even function leaders in the work that we do, uh, one of the things that is people like to avoid is conversations around development, right? Anything to do with, like, you know, conversations that are related to coaching or to mentoring and things like that. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can go into uh, into spaces that you may be not comfortable with or you don't yeah. know how to have a conversation, yeah? Um, and it's actually a, a critical core skill that leaders need to have. And 
many of us are not trained in how to do that, how to have those conversations, uh, leaders, uh, mm -hmm. to have those okay. conversations, let alone the developmental conversations. It's like, okay, you know, why don't you go fill the document and I'll fill my document and we'll come and see where we meet. And then, you know, it's almost like a negotiation as to, you know, uh, so which which develop, which track do you want to go or which program do you want to go and you kind of tick the boxes and you go off because you're just going to finish it off very, very quickly, right? So yep. the conversation is more than that, right? That's one. Uh, this is also a conversation that's driven by the mission, vision, values that the organization holds. And obviously, mm -hmm. it's held very strongly in Sintoma, right? That's right. Um, it, it reminds me of the, the the golden circle that Simon Sinek talks about, where okay. at the core of it, it's the why, why. Okay. right? And you talked about how the why then drives how are we going to do it? How are we going to dem? How what are the behaviors uh, that demonstrates it, right? Um, Sinek circle had the what at the outside, right? The out, the, the larger outer circle is yes, the yes. what. What can we do, right? And now obviously that what is in what. Um, it, it could be in the products that they do, the what mm -hmm. could be that, mm -hmm. or the what mm -hmm. could be that safe that that person wrote. Sintoma is syn synonymous with safety. Yeah, right? um, perhaps, yeah. It could, it could be that, yeah. So kind of like, as you're talking, that, that circle came to my, to my brain. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And yes, yeah. Sandeep, thank you very much for reminding me of uh, some of the other values, which is teamwork, innovation, integrity, yes. And... Um, when he spoke about innovation, I like this aspect also. I mean, normally when we think about in innovation, we think about Eureka ideas and what have we got. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yasin said, no, no, no. Uh, innovation also means continuous improvement, small improvements at the back end also. Mm. doesn't matter. So innovation mm. is not put in a high pedestal of the Eureka Einstein moments, but it's mm. also a given example about being at the uh, so. yes, the small improvements from the back rooms, you know, process improvement. That's also considered innovation for them, you know, mm. and mm. it's all driven by the values. So, so they brought it down uh, so that everyone can have an ownership of those values mm. and contribute to those values, you know. So nice. yeah, so it, it yeah it 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 was very nice to hear from him and whoever had listened into that uh, uh, cast last sure. week, uh, mm -hmm. you should go and listen to him again. There are a lot of ideas in there that you can even replicate within your organizations, right? To use values to drive your behaviors, and as mm -hmm. we all know, with the right behaviors, performance, and get the results. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know, interesting when when I, I know those are the three speakers that we heard, mm -hmm. right? Uh, leaders, mm -hmm. right? Now, what was interesting is when you were speaking, uh, Sham, right? I, I, I'm getting some common factors, emerging factors that is coming out for the mm -hmm. month of uh, October from a development mm -hmm. point of view, right? Tell uh, me, what do you what are you seeing? I, okay, if you all, I, I'm what I'm hearing, right? Um, Number one is about putting people at the center of self-development, of mm -hmm. development, right? Mm -hmm. We heard it from us. We heard it from uh, Dr. Kam also, but knowing your people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, number two, leaders are also responsible for development. Okay. So it's not just a responsibility of L&D or HR or whoever you've got, but the leaders, mm -hmm. because you know your own people, right? Mm -hmm. You're also responsible for the development. And I think now that I'm talking about it, I'm, I'm, I recall Dr. Kam saying, even leaders also need to, to have coaches to develop themselves and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's about self, right. you know, self yeah. and team, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Uh, the third thing I'm, uh, I'm hearing emerging uh, is values drive behaviors. Mm -hmm. Right. Whether mm -hmm. Marcy talked about helping people understand, you know, uh, their own self, oneself. You know, those are the mm. values, personal values that drives your behaviors as leaders, or mm. in the sense of Sentoma, right, where the organizational values drive behaviors. Mm. And the fourth one, I think, what you have also alluded to and uh, banged on is the fact that we need to design deliberate developmental conversations. Mm. Okay. You need to have those conversations, and we need to have it in a very deliberate fashion. So th th this is what I'm 
what I'm hearing, you know, uh, in October there's emerged. Put people at the center of cell development. Leaders are responsible for cell development. Values drive behaviors, and have those deliberate conversations. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I've that's, uh, put that's... that all on on the comments so that we capture it and it's out there, right? Um, yeah. Good. Um, so hey, what about yourself? That... What 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 jumped out for you, if any at all? For me, uh, for me, it's the. I think it's two and four. Um, that the leaders are part of the okay. development, and yes. it's. Um, Oh my God, it's, it's spoken for so long. Is we I mean people have been talking about this, right? And leaders need to be part of the conversation. And it's almost kind of like this is HR's job. This is LND's job, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I think what's strong in the la in this month's three guests is that all three of them talked about the leaders needing to have the conversation. Yes. And and or being able to have that conversation. It's not necessarily that they have that conversation themselves or by themselves. Um, it's in collaboration with HR. It could be, it could be in collaboration with L and D, or it could be guided by L and D and then, you know, then taken by them to their teams, right? Yep. Um, so it is a partnership. And yep. and I think it's twofold. It's both uh, it's both HR and or L and D uh, making that leap, making that jump, and saying, "I'm going to find a way to make the functions be part of this process." Yeah, yeah. And the leader saying, "Yeah, I know it's HR's job." I know HR or stroke L and D is the one responsible for it, but heck, these are my people, and I'm one to have a hand in it. Yep. Right. Yes, it might mean a bit more work initially, um, but at the in the medium to long term, I think it's going to be more efficient uh, as a process in terms of development. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and. And if you think about why leaders are hesitant to do that, I think we go back to the leadership pipeline and what Ram Charan does uh, yeah. design, right? And if you look at the derailers of all at all levels or many of the levels that you look at, like you know uh, when you're a manager of people or a manager of uh, people of managers, right? Um, one of the consistent or common derailers is the fact that we. They, we hold on to our technical skills. We are, mm. we are still seeing ourselves as technical experts. experts. We are still, seeing, yeah, we are still seeing ourselves as subject matter experts or Got having it. the subject. Matter. We are defining ourselves, even if we are, you know, manager of this people and we've got a title. We are still defining ourselves as that in that terms of the technical skills, right? Yes. Um, and as long as we do that, that shift to see how I can partner with HR or I can partner with learning and development or I can partner with OD um, will not be in that realm, in that space. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. No, no. So Definitely. for me, yeah, it's, it's those two. And the second one would be then de designing deliberate conversations. Yeah. But that yeah. would be an effect of this happening. Only when you know, right. the first thing happens that collaboration and that this is part of my role, then the second thing can happen. The second yeah. thing can't happen before the yeah. first. So, you know what? Yeah. Um, on behalf of uh, everyone listening in and watching us in the future, I am so happy that you and Muller curated these powerful leaders because it's a we, home run. It's a we, home run. We, yes. We. <laughs> we, 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 I'm French, no? We, we. we yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, curated... <laughs> curated these powerful speakers because it was it is a home run it, it 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 is now demonstrating that this is just not talk they are leaders who actually show up who mm. empathize with the people know the people and develop them so that they can be better themselves than who they mm. are right and get those results so fantastic curation of leaders uh speakers who have shared for the month of october now 
before we go on to, oh, thank you. Uh, before we go on to your other favorite aspect, let's see what Sandeep has to say. He says, how can, and he's asking this question, Prashant, how can <laughs> L&D help employees identify their core values? Question mark. And then by performing mm -hmm. values assessment tests or asking them to get coaches, guiding them in finding new ones. Okay, before you jump in, Sham, uh, let me just mm. share what uh, Yat Singh had shared last week, right? Mm. Um, so one of the things that uh, Yat Singh said that he, it, it, this was a spin-off question because of what Muller had asked. Uh, mm. He said he had actually held uh, some workshops for some of his people mm. to help them identify their own personal values. Mm. Right, mm. so that they could identify. So he held his own uh, workshop for his own uh, employees, stuff mm. to help them identify, crystallize those values, and so therefore they could see how it is in sync with the organizational ones. So then they can go on to make those right decisions. Mm. Right, and, mm. and um, I, I know Yat Singh did not share within the within this one hour space, but I believe. If there was a need to, they will get developmental coaches to guide them, you know, if there are some areas, you know. So mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't uh, have uh, uh, an idea from Yat Singh whether they use any assessment tests. Uh, but mm -hmm. what about your, your, your experience, Sham? Have you come okay. across anyone using so assessment the, tests? Yeah. So, yeah. so before I go into the assessment tools and things like that, right, mm -hmm. um, I think... Sandeep put a, uh, there's a very interesting spin in his question, not spin, but an angle that he's taken. He talked about, can we identify, identification is one, number two is finding new ones, right? And that's interesting because many people tend to think values are cast in stone. You know, this is yep, my values yep. at the age of, you know, 20s, I just started working, you know, it's going to be there and the same. Uh, you know, as I move into my 30s, I get married, I have a family, and my values are going to be um, uh, the same, right? It's going to drive me or it's going to anchor me. Um, so we all know um, that values change, right? And and yep. from our speak, we talk about purpose. Our purpose changes, and, uh, you know, and, and purpose is uh, the subsets of the subset of value, values are, you know, a subset of purpose and things like that, right? Um, and, you know, it changes. It changes in circumstances. So that's a great thing that you brought up, Sandy. It does change. And sometimes yeah. we we may not realize it. We may not also be able to identify it. We may not be able to say, it's that. That's what my purpose is. That's what the what's driving it, right? Yeah. Um, are there tools to identify it? Uh, yes, there are tools to identify it. Um, Muller, me, and we are still trying to convince um, Mr. Go Ashok Menon that he's on the right path. Uh, we <laughs> we <laughs> we work with an assessment tool called the Flow Profiler, and the Flow, That's Flow right. Profiler uh, starts those conversations. It's not a tool to help per se identify values, but it is. Definitely a tool that looks at what are things that make me who I am, make me work in a certain way when it's a normal situation, makes me work in a certain way when I'm under stress. And, um, and there's a correlation between, you know, certain things that I do uh, in those situations. Now, that's part of the journey of asking, uh, going deeper into uh, the question of values, purpose, and things like that. Yeah. Right? Um, does it um, require a coach? Maybe. There are different interventions. So different organizations have different ways of thinking about how to help people identify mm -hmm. or find, right, uh, purpose or values. Uh, some organizations go down the um, awareness level. You might have coaches to help you do that. You might have training programs or interventions to help you do that. Or um, modes of getting you to build your knowledge around these concepts of values. Yeah. Okay. So in summary, do we are there um, tools out there to help you assess and find out what it is that you know makes you tick? In terms of what drives your behaviors uh, in in a workspace, yes. Um, do values change? Definitely, <laughs> right? Uh, do you need to identify them at different places in time? Maybe yes. Some people need that help, 
Uh, is coaching one of those interventions? Uh, yes, it is, but it's not the only one. Yeah. No, uh, thank you again, Sandeep, for bringing up this question because uh, yeah. as uh, Sean was talking about it, it, I just reflected on a personal experience I had with uh, Sifu Muller. Right mm. when we did the, mm. I mean, she got me to do the uh, flow profiler okay. assessment and all. And and to be fair, to be fair, right? Yes, it, it, you are right to say it is not about helping me crystallize my values, but the conversations because uh, Muller is very experienced in this area. The conversations that we had, right, raised those some of those values up, and helped mm. me understand, right, what my choices have been in the past. And has these choices been helping me? And so mm. therefore, how can I make the right choices to drive my performance? Right? Mm. So yes, uh, the assessment tool in this sense, uh, Flow Profiler is not meant for values per se, but it helps unearth them also. Mm. Right? Mm. And help me uh, be very clear about the choices I can make to drive my performance. Right? So thank you, Sifu, if you're listening in one day. Right. And thanks again, and, Sandeep. <laughs> yes, that is uh, that was a very insightful question. I think it, uh, the question had has many layers. And, yes, that's right. Um, yeah, and and thank you for going and for thinking about it in a, in that in the way that you're thinking about it. I yeah. think uh, we've got thirteen minutes. Um, okay. It'll be a good okay. time for us to kind of uh, consolidate the, our discussion this uh, this evening uh, okay. with okay. a couple more with a. With three slides, I think. Um, okay, and I think okay. that will bring us to the end of it. Let me just bring that up and uh, let us share with it. Um, you see the slides that are, um, mm, I pulled mm. together is is uh, familiar to our, our to us, to our view, 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 viewers, viewers, because uh, this is a starting, a part of the starting, starting video that we have uh, with uh, each show. Um, and I, I told Ashok, I wanted to just start off with this slide. By uh, this quote by Pearl Zhu, uh, Zhu or Chu, sorry, uh, develop talent for tomorrow rather than just hire for yesterday. My takeaway from this is that I still keep hearing uh, managers and organizations saying things along the lines of, um, "Why do we need to develop people? You know, they're going to leave us anyway, and one day they're going to leave us." Yeah. Wow. And it still it blows my mind that something like this still is a concern, a worry for for managers. You know, um, in in today's day and age, you know, it's like it's at the tip of my tongue. I show sometimes to say, parents, if your parents said that about you, and so why should I grow my child? How should I develop my child? You know, they'll leave me one day and go. Sure. Where will we will be there, right? right? I mean, right. it's it's yes, they will leave you and go. Um, sometimes I think you need to think about it in terms of it's good that they are leaving you and going because they're growing and that's part of the process. I mean, sure. right? And you could turn around and look at yourself uh, and how many times have you grown and then left, right? It has benefited you. So yeah, so it was like I had to get it up. Sure, sure. You, you know what? Um, uh, something that you mentioned uh, in the beginning, you said people are still talking this way. Now, um, uh, I've been driving this point. I said we need to move away from our uh, pre-COVID mindset and narratives. Mm. And we need to start focusing on post-COVID possibilities, mm. you know, mm. because uh, we can't hire for yesterday for a very simple reason. Things have changed. Client, yep. customers' needs have changed. Our, yep. our staff needs have changed. Technology is driving a lot of change. And now with the economic headwinds and all that, we are going to see many, many changes. So we mm. need to develop for tomorrow. I mean, I can absolutely see that. So so I maybe they are fearful of moving forward. But you know what? I think we've got to face the fear and move forward in slow, deliberate steps. You know? mm. uh, but I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh it's very simple. I mean, you you... As you say, you develop, one day they're going to leave. If you don't develop, they're yep. going to leave. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so at the, if you put it very, very bluntly, you might as well develop, get some benefits out of it. <laughs> and then they leave, you know, rather than yeah. uh, have to deal with the with low performance. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, this slide, um, I picked, 
I, we picked it because uh, it has a very some interesting insight. So the work that we do primarily is in the locate located in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Um, okay. Now, if you look at the Asia Pacific um, uh, number, right? Twenty-seven yeah. percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it answers the question: How concerned are you about being overlooked by? development opportunities either career advancement or whatever uh, you know uh, development okay opportunities okay, okay. So in asia pacific 27 people one in roughly five uh sorry all are concerned about uh not having that opportunity to develop right okay um, they're either extremely concerned or very concerned so uh, that's like the top two Sure. Now, if you take Indonesia and Malaysia, you take Indonesia, it's 17%, Malaysia, 17. 16%. So, it's very similar, right? Okay. That's way okay. under the 27. It's about half, a halfway point, right? Yep. Um, so, they either, you can look at it from one extreme. One extreme is they're not concerned about development. Or they're having the right conversations. Or they're having the right conversations, exactly. Okay. Right? Yeah. And therefore, those right conversations are making them feel safe making mm. them feel assured that they will be given development opportunities. Right. Yeah, or that all the plans are their trans there's transparency in knowing what's coming, what's in store for them, what's coming up, what's being laid sure, out for them sure. or lined up for them. Yeah, mm. you could look at it mm. that way. Mm. Um, on the other hand, you have Singapore, and Singapore is very close, it's uh, almost uh, you know identical to the Asia Pacific. Uh, number of 27% and also slightly higher than the global number of 21%, right? Mm, mm, mm. Um, so similarly, you can flip it. Are we having the right conversations in, in Singapore? Do mm, we need mm. to build skills around being able to have these conversations if you're not having them right now? Mm, mm. What exactly is making people feel a, a bit insecure about mm -hmm. their growth opportunities or development opportunities in the organizations that they are. Um, that's interesting. And it's something, why we're sharing this, I think it's something for you to reflect in your organization. Are you in that, in that space of comf people are clear, people have transparency, are having those conversations? Mm -hmm. Or are you in that space where people are not sure where I'm going in this organization? Uh, right. Because we're not having those conversations. We're not having those uh, development conversations. Yeah, yeah. Are you anything that you have? Yeah, uh, okay. So um, I'm just looking at, when I was looking at these figures, and I'm just looking at Singapore, I said, hey, you know what? I, I guess uh, when we meet up with the organizations, we need to drill down uh, deeper into demographics of those organizations also. Because in Singapore, mm -hmm. we have something very interesting. We have uh, the workforce that, represented from baby boomers right up to Gen Z, but a smaller portion. So we're not mm. too sure which stages in life that they are mm -hmm. at, that they are right. at and what are the, the needs in that sense. So the developmental, mm. con uh, these numbers could be because across a board of different demographics. Uh, mm. But what it also means then is to be able to have tailored design conversations at different stages mm. for different people. So it could be that also, you know? Yeah, yep. all right, yep. nice. All right. Nice, okay. Um, and this is the last one. Um, we thought that would be this would be great uh, as a wrap up to the whole month and the three conversations that we had with our guests this month. Uh, this is from uh, Josh Burson's uh, group, and okay. it's that you know what's the difference between a business and business centered leadership versus human centered leadership, right? And mm -hmm. if you look at this. When I looked at it, I said, yeah, yeah, obviously, I mean, common sense, duh, you know, kind of like that, right? Um, but really, is it common sense? Because I don't think it's common sense. Because, uh, you know, as Kafka skits, common sense is not so common after all. Huh? Um, <laughs> we may, may know it, but our propensity is to kind of gear towards business-centered you know, uh, leadership, right? Uh, how many of us are comfortable having development conversations? How many of us are uh, 
they're comfortable having coaching conversations. How many of us uh, really have our hands in the in the you know in the mold uh, in those conversations, and or have you passed it on to HR or somebody else to have those conversations, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I and the three organizations that were represented in in October uh, or in our shows, I think these are organizations that have in their various teams that they have, have shown that they've gotten res the results they get is because they are human-centered in their leadership practices. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that from Citibank to Boringa, Ingelheim, Ingelheim, as well as Sintoma, right? Mm -hmm. um, the results that they're getting, at least with the, the, the people that we talk to in the locations that we are. So we had Masi okay. in Indonesia, we had... Uh, Dr. Kam in Malaysia and Yatsing also in Malaysia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I I, I I hear what you're saying. Um, I totally get it, and I want to go a little deeper to understand the sure. genesis of this. Because if you think about it, if uh, okay, I am looking at the last one there. It says people has a means to an end. You see, uh, mm -hmm. when I researched this. If, uh, I read this or researched this when I went back about 100 over years back. You know, Frederick Winslow Taylor wrote a book about principles of scientific management, right? Where he even actually went into factories those days, right? With a clipboard and a stopwatch. He just looked mm -hmm. at how people were performing and he, he, and he, he was looking at people and how to drive their performance. And he, I'm summing, summing up very simply. He yep. focused on two things, carrot and sticks. Mm. He said, if you want to make sure that they perform well, uh, give them carrot and stick. That means uh, give them punishment so they don't make mistakes. Do better, yeah. give them a bonus, right? So parents, mm. carrot and sticks was the way. And in fact, in his book, he even said uh, he wished, you know, everybody were like animals, you know, dumb like animals, easier to just treat them. So the way he, he saw people was pure numbers, digits. Mm. As a means to an end. Should, That's it. Should, yeah. That's it, you know? So it was more of a, a, a hit count approach. Mm. Right, and all the uh, scientific books, the scientific books, I mean, all the management books uh, subsequently that came out after that. Uh, if you go to your MBAs and what have you got, a lot of focus, I suspect, is focusing on those matrices, those numbers, you know, how to meet your ROIs and your strategies and what have you got, you know, mm. Mm. you know. Uh, and that is why, even when Peter Drucker said, right, culture eats strategy for breakfast, you know, yeah, yeah, you hear it, you get sick of it, but when you the three speakers actually demonstrated the importance of that, you know? And that's why you put people as a purpose of business. And if you really think about it, why did we even start businesses? It is because to serve people, the, whether the people are the customer or the people are within the organization, you know? Mm. And, mm. And, and that is how you shift from uh, treating people as a hit count to a heart count, you know? Nice. And, it is, and it is even more important today. What I mean by today is from a COVID, right? It, it has yeah. uh, wrecked a lot of assumptions that we believe in and that we are focusing on. You know, uh, people's values have shifted. Clarity has come in in that sense. You know, needs have mm. changed. So how do we move forward uh, going for the future in that sense? And to me, it has to really be about focusing on the people. And, and just to let you know, Sham, uh, hearing... Uh, uh, the past speakers in the month of mm. September about talent retention. Right? I, mm. I wasn't there for uh, acquisition. One yeah. thing I, I realized throughout all seven speakers so far, right, that I've heard mm. is about the importance of relationships and how relationships will drive results. But they all focus on relationships, relationships, relationships. Yeah. So it's about the people. It is about the people. It is and on that and on that note, I think we brought it very nicely, Mr. Ashok Menon, to uh, the close of today's session. Oh, it's already um, seven. Huh? Yes, yeah, it's <laughs> seven. Yeah, I've got to get you to you know okay. have to pause there, okay. right? Um, and quite honestly, I mean, go listen or watch uh, the shows that was uh, in the month of October. And go further than that and go into the month of September to hear about the other conversations around relationships and why relationships are the thing, is the thing that's going to um, 
define success however you you craft uh, however you define it relationships will be the core of it yeah right. so please go and have a, a listen if you are the listening type that likes to run or jog and walk and listen to a podcast we are on spotify yep. to do that um if you're the type that likes to see feel and uh, see the emotions and feel the emotions and and the thoughts that are going through our guests uh, heads uh, then we are on YouTube as well as on LinkedIn. Yeah, you can access right. us there. Um, so we've come to the end of uh, October, ladies and gentlemen. November yes. is a brand, brand new month. And for November, we are going to start looking at 2023. And we're going to look at what are some leadership trends, uh, challenges that's in store for 2023 and we're going to be talking to um people, slightly different people not in hr and lnd but uh people who look at strategy look from different functions from different industries also from different uh different spaces outside of business that's right All right so we've got a few people lined up we're going yep. to start next week with whom uh ashok it's you and Mr. me again. Mr. Uh, it's you and me again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, November, ladies and gentlemen, uh, lock it in. It's all about trends uh, affecting for 2023 going forward, uh, business uh, trends, people uh, trends, and what are the actions we can take. So we are bringing in uh, very high quality people to have those conversations about how we can prepare ourselves and our businesses for the future. Yep. Okay, so look out for our posts and we'll tell you where you need to go to uh, hear them. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, have a good evening and we'll see you next week. Uh, bye from Kambangan. <laughs> and from Basaris. <laughs> All right, and to the loo. Bye-bye. Have